Hello and welcome to this video on ethanol. More specifically, what is ethanol? Ethanol is the relevant molecule that makes things alcoholic. A safe kind of alcoholic. Methanol is another alcohol that could be applied in this context, but it is not safe. Ethanol is part of the larger family of molecules that are collectively called alcohol. It is one of the simplest examples of these molecules. They are any organic compound with a hydroxyl functional group attached to them. Ethanol itself is two carbon molecules with a hydroxyl group on one end and hydrogen atoms filling the remaining three spaces. This description might be either too simplistic or a little too technical. And so the next part of this video will break the concepts into more manageable pieces. Alcohol is used in a colloquial context and is only a reference to ethanol. As you would know, yeast produce many different alcohols during fermentation, and some of these are in appreciable quantities. They are all made as a product of anaerobic fermentation, or, in some cases, produced from an industrial process. In the first instance, when the yeast metabolizes sugar without oxygen, this is anaerobic fermentation. The sugars are broken down into glucose, and then glucose becomes pyruvate. The pyruvate is modified to acetaldehyde in order to create energy. This is then further modified, this time via enzymes, to move the oxygen molecule by reducing it to a single electron bond, and this freezes space for a hydrogen ion. This last movement is the part that makes it alcohol. The oxygen and hydrogen part are what chemistry calls a hydroxyl group. The HIDR part of this indicates hydrogen, and the OXYL means oxygen. It is a sort of arm that reaches a little away from the carbon backbone of the alcohol. Specifically, there is actually a 109 degree bend between the last carbon and the hydrogen atom. This is a consequence of the physics of the hydroxyl unit. The carbon backbone is how ethanol and other alcohols get their name. The number of carbon atoms in the chain are used to define the IUPAC name. To better understand this, methanol has one carbon and is therefore the simplest and is the first named. Ethanol has two carbons and isopropyl has three. Some of the largest have 16 carbon molecules in the backbone. The carbons connect to each other, but they do not have enough free electrons to make up for the missing electrons, and so hydrogen ions fill that gap. This gives you the following structure. You have a hydroxyl group, you have one or more carbons, and then you have the hydrogens needed to fill the shell of the carbon backbone. As has been incorrectly written in other videos, this can be abbreviated to ETOH. Ethanol burns very well when in concentrations equal to or greater than 60% by volume. This is why many consider it highly volatile. Ethanol water mixtures actually have less volume than what the two parts would have individually. For example, if you were to mix one part water with one part ethanol, you would not wind up with the equivalent of 2, but rather 1.92. This is because ethanol mixes very well with water. The miscibility is an important part of what ethanol is used for in research. Ethanol is a versatile solvent. It mixes with water and many other organic solvents. It is this ability to be mixed with basically anything that makes it so useful, but it contrasts with longer chained alcohol. For example, pentane and hexane do not mix as well, although they are better in some respects. Depending upon what it is being used for, ethanol can extract products that are otherwise water soluble but also those that are not water soluble. This is because the ethanol molecule has both a polar and non-polar component to it. 
the polar part of this comes from the hydroxyl group, whereas the remaining part of it is considered relatively non-polar. This dual nature allows it to interact with many things that it would otherwise not be able to. When ethanol is being produced industrially, they do not require large yeast vats. Instead, CO2 can be reduced with hydrogen, which produces ethanol, acetic acid, and other alcohols. Ethanol is often treated as just a thing that occurs naturally, but it is very interesting, if fundamental chemical. In research, its applications are many-fold. To be treated as just another chemical that occurs naturally does something of a disservice to ethanol, considering its use, how it's made, and how simple it is for what it does. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.